Hi there, so Barbie and Scrappy Media, and today I'm going to create a layout, and this is going to be a sketch. So I think I'm going to put some flowers or tuck some flowers up here, little stain right there. I'm going to make a shape on two of my cardstock. Um, it's going to have a scallop edge border at the bottom. These are going to be they're going to measure two and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then there's going to be a four and a half by six and a half right there. And then a lot of little um, flowers from the paper pa pack. And I'll show you a little, a little bit the paper pad. Um, and then the next one is going to be the same thing. I'm going to put the scallop on the side with a little wavy edge there. It's going to only have one photo, four and a half by six and a half. And then a lot of layers of paper. And then I'm thinking I'm going to do um, a, a, a semi-circle of um, rhinestones or glitter glue and then a little journaling area on the bottom. So I already started. So I'm using these paper pads. It's called Everyday Brights by Lori um, Sherbert. And uh, um, a lot of times what I'm trying to do is create, even though I might not have the pictures yet, for the layout, I want to start using my papers. I, you know, I, I have tons of paper in my scrap room, and I'm not really using it. The inspiration for all these layouts that I've been creating without pictures is from HSN. You have Anna Griffin. She creates albums that it's ready for you just to put your picture on there, a little bit of journaling, and you're done. And I want to do the same thing. I want to create. A bunch of layouts that when I do have the pictures, I have time to develop the pictures, I can just plop a picture down, put a little journaling, and I'm done. Um, and also, they're perfect for gifts. If I, you know, I can create 20 pages using the same paper pad, they all coordinate together. So if an unexpected gift comes up that I have to, either it's an anniversary or a birthday or something like that, then I can gift this album to whoever is, you know, birthday or celebration it is, and then she just simply put the pictures on there. And I really don't get too concerned about matching my pictures with the colors and stuff like that. They tend to just go together um, as long as you don't put real shocking colors um, on it. They're fine. Usually, most of the time, we're either wearing blue jeans or white t-shirt or stuff like that. I really, a lot of my pictures are not very bright um, colors, so they really blend nicely with whatever papers I use. Or the person could make them black and white. You can always make your pictures black and white, especially if you have a lot of colors, color in your album. Um, black and white pictures really blend very well with those types. So, so here is, I already have all my papers kind of ready to get cut, but the first thing I did is I wanted to have a background. background. Um, I wanted a solid cardstock, and the paper pad, everything has um, some kind of drawings or, or anything, so it's kind of busy. The paper is very busy, so I wanted to kind of mute it down, kind of calm it down. Um, so I found this this piece of cardstock in my stash. It kind of goes okay with it, but I really wanted to put a background. To me, it was a little too plain. It needed a faint background. So I took one of these stencils. So this is, um, in an earlier video, I showed you how to create these garlands and using shapes. So this is one of my leftover, after I peeled all the shape out, I saved this. For glimmer misting so that's what I did I put this on I glimmer mist it and there I have it now you know it gets kind of when you glimmer mist paper it kind of gets um, wrinkly and bubbles up on you well what you need is a craft iron I mean I, I bought this a traveling iron a long time ago and usually when I travel most of the hotels I go to already have an iron in the hotel so um, I don't really take it with me anymore I'm not using it, so I decided to bring it down to my craft room. So, and these make perfect 
it's very it, this iron is perfect for a craft room so see how just iron it out at high temperature and always make sure you have this is something that I created with batting um, some extra fabric and a wood a piece of a wood um, that I stapled the batting and the fabric on you don't want to do this on your craft mat because your craft mat will bubble up it will um, get distorted with the heat this is also perfect surface when you um, heat embossing something you can heat emboss on this and you don't have to worry about destroying your craft mat believe me I did I this one I I did the one underneath I did use a little bit of heat on it and it did start bubbling up so that's why I'm starting to use this more often. So there, so you notice that it's a little flatter, so compared to this one, it's actually getting, it's a little flatter. You're going to do the same thing, you turn it over, and then you iron it. Okay, so I'm going to start with this page, so I'm going to have, I'm going to start cutting my stuff down, and then I'll be back to assemble it. So I already cut some of my strips down, so I'm using this flexible ruler, now they do have a crafting or a scrapbook flexible ruler and it's pink and I think it's by Pebbles which is a lot more expensive than what I got this one. This one I purchased at an office supply store and it was pretty cheap. I think it was like less than $5. Um, I bought it some time ago so I'm not sure but I think it was less than $5 and it does the same thing as that scrapbooking one. Um, that it's a little more expensive. So I use that because I want all my curves to be the same. So you you um, you go ahead and shape it to the shape you want, and then you put it on your paper and you trace it. And I usually do it on the back side of the paper. So as you can see, I put it on the back side of the paper. I traced it with a pencil and then I cut it out. So that's how I got this. Now once I started laying my stuff um, together. I noticed that it's a, you know, it's a little bland. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink the edges with a little bit of distressing ink. And then I'm going to round the edges also. And I'm using pine needle. But, and then um, the photo mats that I'm going to be using, it's going to be this one. This one's going to go here. And then this one I'm going to cut it in half. And it's going to go there. And let me go ahead and cut it in half right now and then cut it in half and it's gonna go here and I think I'm gonna go ahead and put some corner rounders on um, some corner pieces on it and I might use this maybe I might use some of this to help layer some more of my paper. Or maybe I'll use it up here. Because it's it's gonna it, the color is similar to that color, so that will bring that color in. There's some of that red color here as well. This is where I'm gonna put my title and I'm gonna put some flowers here. This paper has a lot of wonderful embellishments. So I have a bunch here. I might use this lace, I'm not sure yet. But as you can see, this is, has a lovely flower there. Um, and that's going to do this piece here. I am going to put a little word phrase right here as well. And I think it's going to start, it's starting to kind of really bring up my page, build, build on my page. This, I might bring it down here. And I like doing that. I like taking the paper um, and, and, and the drawings from the paper and cut them out. So I like to use, within the paper, cut the, the embellishments out of that paper. Because what it does, it really gives it a nice little, um, everything will coordinate it. And it just, it's it, it, it helps you... Um, coordinate everything plus it's it's it just goes well together so now I'm just kind of auditioning all the all my layers and pieces down now here I'm going to show you this tag this tag was created with some lace some fabric canvas fabric and a stamp 
And then I edged the edges with a magic marker. I just went around the edges and let it, and I let it bleed a little bit into the fabric. So I'm just kind of figuring out where I'm going to put all my layers. And now I'm going to make a commitment. And I'm going to start cutting things or actually laying things down and creating my um, scallop edge, as you can see here. Now that's the Fisker um, scallop, ed scallop edge punch. And I do like it. It doesn't create, it's supposed to do some emboss embossing circles, but it doesn't. You don't really see those. You basically just see the scallop. And it's a lot easier than trying to use my scissors. So now I'm just going to take some of this um, pine needle. And this is pine needle distressing ink. And I'm just inking all the edges of my layers. And my decision to use pine needle distressing ink instead of brown ink is because I wanted to give it a little definition of all the layers. But I did not want to use any contrasting color like brown or black. Because I would just wanted a subtle definition, um, it, but I didn't want it very strong. And here, I usually this is I do this commonly. I kind of put all the layers um, together before I place them on the base page, like you saw there. Because then I have more control to kind of move it around on the base page and get the angle just right. So here I'm just putting some photo mat. And then another technique that I like to do when I don't have the pictures um, when I'm creating layers, or I mean when I'm creating layouts, is that I put photo corners, as you can see there. And that gives it that makes it look kind of nice. Um, and then when I put the when I get my pictures, I kind of just place the pictures on top of those photo corners. So here I love this paper pad um, because it has a lot of cut cut up cut apart and I like that because um, it really coordinates very well together and so here are some of those flowers or red flowers I'll put the link how to create those red flowers I'll also put the link how to create the flare and also that arrow clip that you see there so all that so those flowers that you see there that red flower it was watercolored that's a clip that I create and also the flare click on the links below and uh, it will take you to the videos where I show you how to create all that. Here I was I decided um, that I was going to use the stencil um, that I used in order to do my glimmer misting, but then it didn't really quite fit, and the colors were just off. So that's why I I, I removed the stencil, and I basically just going to stay with the papers that I already cut out for my layers. And then these are just flowers from the paper pad and butterfly from the paper bag. So I'm just kind of layering them to see where they should go. Now that little bubble um, clip that you see over there was another one that I created. Now I don't have a tutorial how I created that specific, specific one. Um, but I do have a video how to create different types of different clips using just a regular paper clip. So click on the link below and I will take you to those videos. So here I'm just layering all the pieces and then I needed to round the corners on my red chevron paper that I also created. And click on the link and I'll show you how to create that type of paper. And it's, made, it's basically just embossing powder and just a stamp. So here I'm just layering all my um, pieces and then um, all the flower embellishment and I'm creating like a little cluster right there underneath the photo mat with all my flowers and then um, when I do get my pictures I will go ahead and adhere um, a little strip of paper um, where I can journal about the picture underneath all the flowers. So the last thing that I, this page needed was something for underneath there and I decided to use an Allie Edward stamp phrase that says you make me smile okay I'm done with my layout I think I have enough layers there so this is my first layout and this is my second layout and oh I'm almost done. I have to do this semicircle here. 
So let me go ahead and do that. In order to do that, so it's going to go over here, I need to use a template. Now, you can use, actually, I'll show you how to use a circle. So we can use this circle. And I'm going to use the inner part. And then I'm going to take a pencil right there. And I'm going to make dots. So about every quarter of an inch. I do have a template. And then I can use that template to create my circles. But you can use the same thing instead of a template like I have here. So I'm going to use my template. But if you don't have a template, you can use something circular and do what I did. And then I'm going to use some glitter glue. And I think I'll use this one. This is my um, bead in a bottle. And I'm just going to create a nice bead. Now it's going to create like a little peak. So if you just go underneath and flick it, it'll flatten the bead out. And then go back with an eraser and erase the little dots. I'm going to go back and erase those dots that you see there once it's dry. So there's my circle, my and layout. And then I'm going to go ahead and put bead each center of my flower with a little bit of glitter. So there's this my, one of my layouts. Then I'm going to take the next one and do the same thing. Put a little bit of glitter. And in order to um, kind of tie in with that one, I'm going to go ahead and put, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and put three beads right on top. three beads right on top and there you have it so I hope you liked the tutorial and thank you for watching bye now